So then Charlottesville happened. I still had not had a conversation with this friend since the Twitter DM conversation. And my boyfriend tweeted out Tim Pool's video about Charlottesville. I'll link it below. Charlottesville is the escalation of identity politics is what it's called. Tim Pool is half Korean. So is this friend I'm talking about. She either didn't care, which she should because of her whole intersectional thing and like identity being important and relating to your group, but she might not have known that. So literally all he did was just tweet out the video. Didn't even provide any context, just tweeted it out. You know, as Tim Pool likes to say, he's just a center lefty. He's just kind of a reasonable guy. He just made a very balanced argument in the video. So then this friend who hadn't talk to me since the DM conversation decides to reply to this tweet that my boyfriend made. Even though, as you will recall, in the previous incident, she was like, oh, I didn't want to start a debate. I didn't want to engage in this public forum. I deleted all my tweets. I don't like to debate. I don't want to upset anyone. Remember that? Yeah, no, here she is responding again, not DMing him about it, like replying to his tweet. And she says, Charlottesville is the escalation of white nationalism and racism. I can confidently say Nazis and the KKK are da 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 in the wrong. So he said, identity politics begets identity politics. Racism and identity-based bigotry is bad regardless of the source or target, but not equally bad. You're a smart person, so you probably recognize the false equivalency. Identity politics is born out of self-protection. BLM march came from people getting shot by police. Women's march came from sexual harassment. They were defending their rights and lives. This march used Nazi and KKK symbols and rhetoric, which threatens other people's rights and lives. There is a time and place to critique the left, but it's also important to acknowledge white nationalism for what it is. And my boyfriend replied, I oppose ideas. Racism is racism. I oppose white supremacy is just as much as black supremacists, which for example, BLM founders are. Needless to say, she did not take that particularly well. So my boyfriend asked her if she watched the video and she said, that's what I'm responding to. He said, can you properly identify these people? They aren't Nazis, neo-Nazis perhaps, but Nazis are of a specific place in time and history. Having actual Nazis in my family history, I'd appreciate it if people didn't conflate clearly different groups of individuals and their ideas. So he was trying to make a point that he had Nazis in his family and a lot of Nazis were people who just went along with the Nazi regime. So they did didn't get killed and their families didn't get killed. Let's not call these people that because this is like a very distinct historical reality, a very distinct historical group. White supremacists or white nationalists occupy their own space. Neo-Nazis occupy their own space, even though they may have some overlap in their ideology. So then her boyfriend jumps in and says, having people in my family history who were killed by actual Nazis, I'd appreciate it if people didn't resort to semantic arguments and instead denounce these hateful actions perpetrated by people who embrace Nazi customs, chants, and ideology. Here's the most beautiful comment. Your reluctance to do so makes it seem like you are not as ashamed of your Nazi heritage as you should be, which from having met you is honestly unsurprising. That fucking got me so pissed off. And for some context, I've never liked her boyfriend because the first time that I met him, basically it boils down to me realizing that he may have encountered my brother in college sports. When I told him my brother's name and where he went to college, he was like, oh yeah, I know him. Me and my friends used to make fun of him. He said it in a slightly different way, but that was basically what he said. And he did not have any remorse about it. He wasn't like, oh yeah, actually like we kind of used to make fun of him and like, ugh, like, sorry about that. No, no. He was like real comfortable just telling me that him and his friends used to make fun of my brother behind his back. And I was just sitting there like, is this happening? Like, this is the first time I'm meeting you and this is how you're acting to me? That is a major red flag. But I looked the other way on it because I don't like to judge people necessarily by how their boyfriend acts or how some other friends act. Like I judge them by how they act. But after this, I was like, how can I be friends with someone who thinks that I would date a Nazi sympathizer? If that's what she thinks of me, like how is this a friendship? Like you don't know me at all. She's clearly someone who has no personal integrity because she previously was like, I'm not gonna engage in this way. You know, I regret doing this and then just jumps in again. And then after her boyfriend says that to my boyfriend, you know, launches this like ad hominem attack on him, which is not something my boyfriend did when he jumped into my Twitter conversation with my friend. She said nothing to me. I not apologize for my boyfriend, but I at least acknowledged that he jumped in. I acknowledged what he is like. I acknowledged how I understood like why she may have been feeling sensitive to that or that I could see that there had been some conflict there while still acknowledging like he's allowed to say what he said. I mean, I could have reached out to her, I guess. But like, what was I gonna say? Like, hey, are you gonna comment on the fact that your boyfriend just said this shit to my boyfriend? And like, do you agree with him? Like, is that what I was supposed to do? I was supposed to ask her, like, do you agree with your boyfriend that my boyfriend is a Nazi sympathizer? Are you gonna acknowledge that this happened? But I didn't and she didn't. And that is how the friendship ended. That's it. We never talked again.
again. And sometimes I think about reaching out to her and I still have a book that I borrowed from her and I think about finding it in me to like write her a letter and send the book back to her, but not sure what I would say. And I mean, I have no hostility toward her, honestly. I liked her otherwise, you know, I always liked hanging out with her and talking to her and I hope she's doing well. We're still friends on Facebook. She never defriended me. I get her author newsletter that she sends out. Actually in her newsletter after Charlottesville, she said, truthfully, I've been writing myself in circles. I'd planned to write a light newsletter about Instagram stories and selfies. And then Charlottesville happened and lightness felt irrelevant. So instead, I tried to write about what was happening in our country. I wrote so much. I wrote about the way conversation devolves on Twitter, about friends who inspired and friends who disappointed. Hello! Disappointing friend! Friend who disappointed. Yours truly. I mean, she had to be talking about me. I'm sure maybe there could have been another friend who's like lumped into that, but like that, that was about me. I mean, I'm out here talking on YouTube about it and I never reached out to her either. I guess I could have, but honestly, what would you have done? And I'm currently going through a situation with a friend where I need to reach out to her and find out if she's just busy and that's why she's not talking to me or if it has to do with me revealing my libertarianism and non-feminism to her. And so maybe I just need to get more of a backbone. Maybe I need to get more of a spine and just engage. I know I'm conflict averse as well, not as conflict averse as most women. I have much higher tolerance for conflict. I thrive in competing, but I don't enjoy a situation where I would have to go be like, are you not talking to me because you now think I'm a bad person because of my political beliefs, my ideological beliefs. Oh, you do hate me? Oh, you don't You don't want to be friends anymore? Okay, bye. So another friend bites the dust. That was like a year and a half ago. And sometimes that feels like a really long time. And sometimes it feels like it just happened yesterday. But you know, I'm glad to have found that out. I'm glad to have gone through that and like seen that. And I think I handled it with a good degree of empathy. I mean, I could see in her a version of myself from not that long ago. And so I was trying to be empathetic. And the fact that she couldn't even really see that was kind of upsetting. It hurts, you know? It hurts to have gone through that. It hurts to know that there's someone out there who thinks a certain way about me. If she thinks about me at all, she's probably just like, I don't understand how my friend could go from being an ardent feminist to anti-feminist. So sad. Must have been her libertarian boyfriend that brainwashed her. You know, I don't know. I don't know what she thinks, but knowing that it's not possible for her to have any real understanding about who I am because we barely had a conversation about it and she didn't take the time to try to know. And also I'm someone who's constantly evolving. You can't just make an assumption based on who I am on one particular day. And so with this video, I mourn that friendship and I mourn the fact that so many people probably have this experience that they lose friends because of this shit. And I understand why people don't talk about it. It's why I never talked about it because I never thought that politics was important. It's never what's connected me to people. But I've also kind of learned that if I do talk about this stuff, it is a litmus test to show me who will really stick around for me no matter what. And so it's possible that if I had never broached that with her later on, she would have hit the fan, not even necessarily because of me later bringing up my political beliefs, but just some other situation where she might have let me down because of the way she demonstrated a lack of personal integrity, a lack of responsibility for her own actions. And like, while I wish her well, at this point, I'm really only looking for people who are willing to engage with me in a constructive way, who will see me, who don't see my beliefs as the totality of who I am, who are able to be friends of people who don't agree on things and who have a strong sense of personal integrity, personal responsibility, and a generosity of spirit. And luckily I found some of those people. I have my friend who left the left. I have another friend that I met through dance who I can be completely honest with about myself. So far they're all men. I'm not gonna hold my breath just yet, but I might have a woman to add to that rotation. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching. I hope you like this video. If you have any comments, you're welcome to leave them below. And I hope to have more content for you very soon.